Hey folks, welcome to creating an XAPI enabled Unity application. What we're going to do here is we are going to create a Unity app from scratch. Um, if you have never done this before, that is quite all right. Then in that app, we're going to add some functionality that allows us to send statements to our learning record store whenever you like. Um, with Unity, it's a game development platform. So any possible way you might trigger an action to happen, um, whether your learner selects the right answer for a quiz, or in a game, maybe you score a goal in soccer, um, any single interaction like that, you can deliver an XAPI statement with the functionality that we're going to build. Let's get to it. Um, launch your Unity. All right, create new. Let's name our project, whatever we'd like to name it. Um, X API demo. All right. All right, and we're here in Unity. So we have a number of panels open and your uh, instance of Unity may launch in a different layout. So just be aware. So over here is the hierarchy tab. This details the objects that are in our scene. So right now we have a main camera and a light. And just so you uh, have some reference, if I wanted to make a cube, bam, I made a cube and that's in my scene. And the camera documents where we're viewing the scene from. We don't need either of these um, for our tutorial today, but good to know. The right hand side here is our inspector. This details all of the components that are attached to each of the game objects in our scene. So right now we're viewing the components that are attached to our main camera, our directional light, and our cube. We have our console. This is where uh, debug messages will appear. And we have our project window. This is how we can browse through all of the files that are associated with this project. All right, we need to add a couple libraries so we can use their functionality. So down in the description below, I'll link to a couple different resources. So head to newtonsoft.com slash JSON, hit download. And I prefer to just download the zip file directly. It'll take you to their GitHub with their latest releases. And the latest one here is 12.0.2. So let's grab that zip file. And I'll just save it in my assets folder. While that one's downloading, let's grab our next one. If you um, go to the GitHub link here and scroll down to this Context activities, tin can, net 45 signed.dll. This is the one that I use. So let's save that in our assets folder as well. Okay, we need to extract this library, but we actually want to move it first. We don't want to extract all of this into our project. We only want um, one file from within it. So I'm going to move it to the desktop. And I'll extract it here. Let's open up the folder. Go to bin. It has libraries for all the different versions of .NET. 
um, but I've had the most success with Net45. Don't ask me why. Um, so let's open that up. Grab newtonsoft.json.dll and drag that into our project folder. Now that we've done that, we are ready to go back to Unit. So we can see in our project window here, newtonsoft.json and tin can net 45 signed. If we select them, we get information about them in the inspector here. If you're using a different version of Unity, it is definitely possible that you're getting an error, um, something to the effect of um, targeting the wrong .NET version. In order to fix that, go to Edit, Project Settings, and then Player. In the player settings, this is where we can adjust certain um, settings for all of the different devices that you build for. This little arrow icon represents the editor where we are right now. So we need to change how our editor is using or what version of .NET our editor is targeting. So go to other settings and change the API compatibility level from .NET Standard 2.0 to .NET 4.x. If you are also, if you're looking to build for other devices, like here's the Android build settings, you would need to make that change here as well under other settings, API compatibility level, and you'd update it to 4.x. And again, depending on what version of, you, of Unity you're using, your editor may say it needs to restart at this time. That's fine. Let it restart. When it loads back up, you'll be good to go. Okay. We're ready to write some code that is going to deliver these statements. So right-click in your project window. And so create C-sharp script. Let's name it something to the effect of statement sender. Whatever you do, you can name it anything you like, but do not use a space in that name. It'll give you errors, so don't even try. Double click to open. On my computer, I use Visual Studio as the default code editor. But if this is your first time with Unity, it will most likely open in Mono Develop. And that works just as well. Okay, I'll actually leave it here. We need to reference here under where um, the lines it says using system.collections, blah, 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 using Unity Engine. We need to tell it a few additional libraries to reference before we get started. So let's say using system using tin can if that auto populates you know you have imported tin can correctly so the fact that I did that is a good sign using tin can dot l r s responses okay now in our public class here. Let's create a few strings or a few variables. And these are going to hold the information we're sending to XAPI. So public string actor. Public string verb. Public string definition. Let's do a public int value. And we need a private remote LRS LRS. Okay. Let's go ahead and um, copy and paste some code that you'll find down below in the description. I have it here. 
Make sure I got all the top parts correct. Looks good. So let's come to this void start section. We're going to copy this line, these lines. And that's setting up our LRS variable uh, that we defined previously. And we need to input some information here. We need that our LRS is endpoint, key, and secret. Now, if you already have an LRS, you can get that data um, from your admin login. If you don't already have an LRS, check out my colleague Jose's video. Um, he's going to be posting a video that walks you through setting up a learning locker LRS with Amazon's AWS. We already have our LRS set up, so I'm going to go grab these details from it right now. We need to send a statement. So let's go and grab that portion of the code. Um, we're going to skip this update function for now. We'll come back to that. I'm going to copy this send statement function. Okay, what this function does is it's going to take the variables that we've already laid out, three strings, actor, verb, definition, and one integer for value. This is a, um, a basic use of XAPI. There's many more um, points of data that you could capture with it. Um, these are the four that we've chosen to use right now. Um, but you could certainly uh, rewrite portions of this to add additional points of data. So, okay, we're going to call this send statement function. Basically, what it does is it takes those variables and it's building them into a XAPI statement structure. And then it's simply sending it to our LRS. Uh, if it's successful, we'll know because it'll give us a debug message that says save statement as well as a unique identifier for that statement. If it's failed, it will tell us statement failed as well as any error message that might be available. Okay, so we have our connection to the LRS and we have a function that will send a statement to that LRS. We need to actually trigger that. Um, with Unity, being a fully fledged game development platform, there are 10 million different ways uh, that you could trigger this function to run. Uh, that's going to be for you to dream up. For the simplicity of this tutorial though, we're going to send it when the space bar is pressed. So under our update function, we're going to say if input dot get key down key code dot space and what this is saying is if it detects that a key is down and that key happens to be the space key then send statement All right, that should be all we need to do in our scripting. Let's head back to Unity. Let's make sure we saved it, we did. All right, now we need to drag that script that we just created onto an object in our game. So let's grab it and drag it onto the object. So I put it on our cube. And if we go to the inspector for the cube, we can see our statement sender is here. Now for this, we need to fill out our actor, our verb, and the definition we want to send. Um, but let's do that. All right. So we filled in our actor, our verb, our definition, and our value. Now let's test it. Click play. 
and if we hit the spacebar, it should send a statement. We'll know if it works based on the message down here in the console. And it worked. It says save statement and, and that unique identifier. So let's head over to our LRS to double check that. And we got it. Alfonso completed module one, introduction. If you want to roll that out, you can see all of the data that has come through. Like I mentioned, we're only using a small amount of that. Um, so we're using the name, the actor's name. Um, we're using the raw score under result. We're using the verb. And we're using the definition. Uh, but there's certainly a, more data points where you can um, send more data points that you can send to your LRS. I hope that's been helpful. Um, um, I'll link to one of my favorite YouTube um, Unity developers. His name is Brackies, um, and he has a lot of great tutorials. I've learned everything from him. And Get out there, start creating. Good luck.